Weirdo Benjo. Do you know what I love about February? I love the fact that in February, all the stores, all the supermarkets get overexcited and get ahead of themselves and start selling Easter chocolate early because Easter chocolate is the most premium, tasty, amazing chocolate that you can get. And when I say Easter chocolate, I genuinely just mean mini eggs. I absolutely love mini eggs. You could even say that I think mini eggs are very cool. This video isn't sponsored by Cool Shirts, I just really like this jumper. I think this jumper's very cool, to be honest. Hello there everyone and welcome to video. Today I'm going to be breaking down and showcasing a huge chunk of VR games that are still to come in 2022. Or at least I hope they're coming in 2022. We can't write off delays, delays do happen, but at the moment all these games are scheduled to launch this year. Now the reason I'm making this video is because we're sitting in that lull period of time. There's not a lot coming out, February has been a quiet month for VR games, and a lot of people who got VR headsets at Christmas are probably thinking, where are the games? Where are the exciting new things coming? Where are the products that I want to jump into? And this video is just to showcase that yes, there are games on the horizon and there are some really exciting things on the way throughout the rest of this year. And this is only a handful. There will be games that we don't even know about yet. One thing I wanted to say before I start reeling off these games though is VR is growing but it still isn't fully grown. At this point in time, there are still huge gaps between big meaningful releases, and that's because VR right now is propped up by smaller dev teams and indie developers. We don't have a lot of the huge development teams working on VR games that they have in flat screen gaming. But eventually, as VR continues to grow, those big dev teams will start to take notice, and the amount of content we get will start to ramp up. We're still early in the journey of VR becoming a mainstream form of entertainment, and I fully believe that it will get there in time. But that's enough of me rambling. Here are some games you can look forward to in 2022 and beyond if some of them do slip out due to delays. Let's have a look. First up, we have a brand new game from VR veterans Wolf and Wood, the studio responsible for The Exorcist and Chair in a Room, to name just a couple of their previous projects. This game is called The Last Worker, and it's a first-person narrative adventure game set in a dystopian future where robots and automated systems have basically taken over the entire workforce, and you, as a lone human, are trying to coexist in that world. Very dystopian, very Black Mirror, and huge portal vibes coming from the early trailers for this upcoming release. Do you like RPGs? Do you like quests? Do you like loot? Do you like combat? Do you like casting spells? Do you like boobs? And do you like sexy time? If you answered yes to any or all of those things, then Irragon is a game you have to check out. An upcoming erotic RPG for both VR and flat screen gamers. There is actually a demo for this one on Steam. You can run off and play this now. The dev team are completely committed to making a satisfactory product here. I say satisfactory and I mean it in two different ways and they're getting a lot of feedback from their current Kickstarter backers to make sure this product hits the mark when it launches hopefully later this year. An erotic RPG? <laughs> Who'd have thunk it? Hot on the heels of the incredibly successful launch of Zenith comes Elysia, another VR Mamorpaga, massively multiplayer online role-playing game. Now Elysia looks to have a more grounded and typical fantasy setting and aesthetic than Zenith. I would say that Zenith is a little bit more technological, a little bit more cybernetic than Elysia appears to be, and that's a good thing. It's great that they're different and it's great that they're both trying something new within this space. Now I think VR MMOs are going to become a very densely populated genre within VR because they perfectly blend the social aspect and the gaming aspect of VR into one accessible package. I'm really excited to see what Elysia does and I'm really excited to see how it sets itself apart from the current competition, which is Zenith. This next title is currently only confirmed to be releasing on PlayStation VR, but I am certain it will make its way to the Quest 
and PCVR in the fullness of time. Moss Book 2 looks absolutely fantastic and it looks like they're building on the great foundation that made the first game so successful. Moss is still one of the very best VR platformers that money can buy and fans of Quill on all VR platforms deserve to go hands on with the sequel. Fingers crossed it's just a timed exclusive for the PlayStation, I'm pretty sure it will be. I can't wait to jump back into the magical world of Moss and get reacquainted with Quill. Not much is known about this next one, but if these screenshots are anything to go by, it's time to get very excited. Gambit is a brand new co-op campaign driven shooter that's filled to the brim with guns, gangs and mayhem. The game boasts a 20 hour campaign that can be entirely played as a party of four. Apparently there's loot, there's masks to unlock, boss fights, mini games, leaderboards, climbing and all kinds of other crazy stuff. Can't wait to see more Gambit hopefully coming in 2022. Hot off the presses, this one has just recently been announced. A brand new Peaky Blinders VR game called Peaky Blinders The King's Ransom is coming from the dev team who gave us the Doctor Who VR game Edge of Time. Now again, there's barely any information about this game, but Killian Murphy is reprising his role as Thomas Shelby for the game, and that excites me enough to grab my attention. You can also hang out in the Garrison pub from the show, and I really like the show. I want to pretend I am a Peaky Blinder. So this could be the game for me, but it remains to be seen what form it will take and what kind of game this is going to be. Stay tuned to this one, Peaky Blinders, The King's Ransom, hopefully coming in 2022. Another game based on a TV show now, The Twilight Zone, is getting the VR treatment from developers Fun Train at some point in 2022. Now I did actually apply to be a beta tester for this one and check out what it's about because again, there's barely any information out there. I don't know what form this game is going to take, but I wasn't successful, so I haven't been able to go hands on with this one yet, but I'm a big fan of the show, both the original and the more modern Jordan Peele driven remake or reinvention. I'm excited to see where they could go. Something like the Twilight Zone could in theory work really well as an episodic story driven VR game with short experiences set in different worlds with different mysteries to unravel but I don't know if that's the form it's going to take. We'll have to wait and see when Twilight Zone VR launches at some point in 2022. Now this is the first game on this list where I'm not confident it will come out in 2022, but I wanted to include it because I know hype levels are off the charts for this one. Stress Level Zero, the creators of Boneworks are working on a quest platform game. At the moment, it's just titled Project 4. That's just a code name as far as I can figure out. Now, a lot of people have been referring to this as Boneworks for the Quest, but I don't think it is that. This is a brand new game from this very, very talented VR development team, and that's why it's taking them so long to show us something. But I think it will be worth the wait. Their previous projects have been sublime. Boneworks is one of the best VR games money can buy, and I can't wait to see what they can do with the Quest hardware and platform. Project 4 maybe coming out in 2022, here's hoping. I love survival games, and VR survival games are just the absolute best. My two favorites currently are Song in the Smoke and The Forest in VR. But that might change soon, when Green Hell VR releases at some point in 2022. Now, Green Hell is a game I never played flat screen, and I'm actually kind of glad I haven't, because I want my first experience to be as immersive as possible. I really can't wait to go hands on with this one. It's a survival game set in the heart of the jungle, and you need to survive. You need to pull leeches off your body, bandage yourself up when you get hurt, and defend yourself from wild animals like leopards and and God knows what else. Building campfires, making sure you stay warm, making sure you eat, making sure you drink, it's all in there, and I really can't wait to see how this team can pull it off. Very excited for Green Hell VR, and hopefully I'll have some content coming to the channel very soon. Is there a bigger VR project in the works right now than Grand Theft Auto San Andreas VR? I honestly don't think there is, and I kind of don't think there could be. Despite the lackluster launch of the GTA Definitive Trilogy, 
Grand Theft Auto is still a household name and one of the biggest franchises in gaming. To see it finally officially come to VR on the Quest platform is going to be a huge landmark moment for VR in general. I am very, very excited for this, but I'm a little bit apprehensive. I want to see what it looks like and if it's the entire game. Because there is still a little bit in the back of my mind that says, surely it's not the entire game, right? Surely I won't have all the freedom I had in the flat screen version, right? If the answer to those two questions is yes, I will, then this is set to be something absolutely massive. And I cannot wait for it. Up next, a new VR game for those of us who like to use our brains. From Cyan Worlds, creators of Mist, Abduction and Riven, comes Firmament, a brand new narrative-driven, puzzle-focused VR and PC adventure. If you've played Mist, if you've played Abduction, if you've played Riven, you already know what to expect. Mist broke me. I'm not ashamed to say it. It absolutely broke me and some of those puzzles destroyed me for days. It's the kind of game where you genuinely need a piece of paper and a pen to start trying to figure out the solutions to these obtuse but exceptionally well put together puzzles. If you like a challenge, then keep your eye on Firmament because I'm sure it will be just as gripping, just as thrilling and just as difficult as Cyan World's previous VR efforts. It has been a while since we've seen a new game from Alchemy Labs, creators of Job Simulator, Vacation Simulator, and the Rick and Morty VR game. But in 2022, they're set to unleash a brand new VR game upon the world, and that game is called Cosmonius High, a game that blends their distinct colorful characters, high level of interactivity, and exceptionally wacky sense of humor all together throwing players into a alien high school. I don't know much else about it. It looks very typically Alchemy Labs, and that's enough to get me excited. If you want a funny, humorous, wacky interactive experience, then keep this one on your radars. Or if you're just a fan of Job Simulator, Vacation Simulator, and Rick and Morty, then keep an eye on what Alchemy are creating with Cosmodius High. Five games for the price of one now, but I genuinely don't think all five of these will release in 2022. I think this is more of a long-term plan thing. Vertigo Games at the end of last year announced they're working on five more Oculus products, and one of them was going to be a fan favorite IP from Deep Silver. That has me very, very excited. Deep Silver, of course, have worked on Dead Island, Metro, I believe even Saints Row, there's a lot of great franchises that could be making the jump to VR included in those five brand new games from Vertigo. Now Vertigo are one of the very best VR devs right now and I fully trust them to make a great product and I can't wait to see what they've got in the works. It's great to see that they have so many new games coming up and that really shows long-term commitment and a long-term plan to invest into VR. From Vertigo, the VR dev team, to Vertigo 2, the highly anticipated single-player action-adventure first-person shooter for PC VR now. If you're a PC VR user who has played the original, then you're probably chomping at the bit to get your hands on the sequel, and I completely understand why. The level of polish and quality and expertise displayed in the first Vertigo game is rare. You don't see something that humorous and well put together in VR often. It really is a rare thing, and if you haven't played it, please go and check out the original or the remastered version. Vertigo 2 still doesn't have a release date, but it is being worked on by a solo developer, which absolutely blows my mind. So it will be ready when it is ready. But oh my god, as soon as it's out, I'm jumping into this one. It looks absolutely fantastic. The first and only PlayStation VR 2 game on this list right now, Horizon Call of the Mountain. Now this one comes with a few caveats. Firstly, you've got to find yourself a PlayStation VR 2 headset when it comes out. Secondly, you also have to find yourself a PlayStation 5, which is probably going to be even harder than finding the VR headset. And thirdly, we don't really know what this game is in its current state. The vertical slice of gameplay that we've seen looked absolutely gorgeous, but it didn't tell us about what this game is. Is it an on-the-rail shooter? Is it a big open world adventure game? Or is it a smaller, tighter focused action adventure game in a more fixed location or set of locations? One thing's for sure, I do trust 
Fire Sprite. The team working on this made The Incredible, The Persistence, a VR and flat screen game that I love, and I trust they're going to do an amazing job with the Horizon IP. Can't wait to see this one. It will likely be the first PSVR 2 game I play, if I can find a PSVR 2. Now, technically, this has existed for a long time in Rec Room and in VR chat, but it's great to see an official version finally coming to VR. Among Us. Among Us VR is coming to the Quest platform, and I think it looks amazing compared to what we've already got in VR chat and Rec Room. I've had a lot of fun with those fan-made experiences, but seeing the Skeld in all its glory properly recreated in VR by the original team who made the flat screen game, that's pretty special. The game looks set to have full motion controls. I've seen clips of characters high-fiving and waving at each other, and I'm just excited to get a big group together and jump in and play this one to death. If it's anywhere near as fun as the flat screen game, I'm gonna sink a lot of hours in here, screaming at people and lying really badly. I'm a terrible liar. I just laugh. I just immediately laugh. I actually touched upon this game very briefly in my VR games coming in February 2022 video that I put out just last week. Lost Ember is getting a brand new VR version and if you haven't heard of Lost Ember, you need to go and check it out. I absolutely love this game in its flat screen format. It's a game where you embody various different animals and you can jump between them on the fly. The world has basically become inexplicably devoid of humans and it's just filled with animals and you're trying to discover what happened to all the humans. The game is frankly gorgeous with an amazing soundtrack and a beautiful almost hand-painted aesthetic. I really can't wait to see how this translates into VR and I wonder how they're going to approach it. Will it be first person or will it be the third person product it was on flat screen just converted into a 3D VR game? A double whammy in one entry now as these are both management games that have a very similar theme but their gameplay completely sets them apart. Firstly, we have Little Cities from End Dreams, a very relaxing, chill out city builder for people who want a more arcadey, relaxed approach to that kind of genre. I've played this game already and I had a wonderful time with it. It sucked a few hours away from my life. I didn't quite realize how much time was passing while I was in there and it is exceptionally chill out and not too punishing on the player. And then on the other hand, we have Cities VR from Fast Travel Games, a VR version of the immensely popular Cities skylines. If you're looking for a more simulation, in-depth management experience that has bustling streets filled with people and cars and you look after the power and the plumbing and it's stressful but really really good, then that's the game to go for. Two city builders both doing things very very differently and both coming out hopefully in 2022. This next game has been called the best looking VR game that a lot of people have ever seen and I would be inclined to agree. Hubris is an upcoming PC VR game that looks absolutely phenomenal. These visuals are mind-blowing and when we get to the point where all VR games look like this, oh my word, I'll be a very, very happy chap. Now I haven't actually played Hubris yet, there is a demo going around that some people have gone hands-on with. I'll put a link so you can check out some gameplay, probably Gamertag VR, he did a great video on this. And the game genuinely does look mind-blowing. In terms of what the game is, it's a single-player action-adventure first-person shooter set on a mysterious planet. And you have to survive against alien foes and a corporation that are trying to terraform said planet. That's all we know right now, but if the visuals are anything to go by and the gameplay I've seen in Gamertag's video, this is one to keep an eye on. Hubris, hopefully launching in 2022. I wish I had something to show you for these next two games, but I just don't. Nothing has been announced since the original unveiling of Assassin's Creed VR and Splinter Cell VR, two huge franchises that are making their way to the Oculus platform. The Oculus platform doesn't even exist anymore. It did when these games were announced, and I assumed they'd be coming to the PC VR platform as well as Quest, but now it looks like it would probably just be Quest, but time will tell. Assassin's Creed and Splinter Cell, hopefully 2022 is the year we finally get to see some gameplay and get to understand what these games actually are. The amount of development time that's gone into them makes me think they're proper full-fledged experiences and I hope that's the case. Oh my god, this list is getting longer and longer. I didn't want this to be a long video, but it's spiralling out of control. The next game comes courtesy of the developers behind one of my favourite VR games, 
into the radius. Now they're working on a game called Troll Hunter. I don't know how inspired they were by the Troll Hunter film. I really like that film by the way, but this is a game where you literally have to survive and hunt down trolls using traps and equipment and weapons at your disposal. If I've learned anything, from Into the Radius it's that these developers know how to make a great survival game, a great simulation survival game. And if they can give me a game that pits me up against giant trolls, I'm already sold. I'm already sold. I do believe there is a demo for this on Steam. You can check it out, but I'm sure development has progressed a huge amount since the demo was released in the middle of 2021. I've spoken about this game so much, probably three times previously on the channel, so I'm not going to say anything and I'm barely even going to show any trailer. Requisition. It's coming in April. It basically looks like Dead Rising VR, a game where you have to build weapons with the things you find. You might find a toaster and you might be able to sellotape the toaster to a bat to make a hammer and you can play it co-op with your friends. I love smashing zombies. I love Dead Rising. This takes those two things puts it into VR and lets me play with my friends. It's out in April. I'm very excited to play it. One thing we don't have enough of in VR is platform games, more specifically first person platform games that really test the dexterity of the players. Another thing we don't have enough of in VR is games where you play as a monkey. Toss combines both of those things and lets you play as a monkey whilst you traverse through first person VR platforming playgrounds. So it's, it's already the perfect VR game. In my humble opinion, one of the very best publishers in gaming right now is Devolver. They consistently knock it out of the park with their indie developers and the amazing unique games they put out. So I was very excited to learn that Devolver are working on a VR game. And that VR game lets players play as a giant squid who's wreaking havoc on cities, playing Jenga, and generally creating all kinds of physics-based chaos. This adventure game looks set to release in 2022. It looks exceptionally colorful and chaotic, and I can't wait to become the Kraken and throw people a million miles into the sky. Oh my word, I'm so tired. I've been recording for so long. Two games to go. First one, Propagation Paradise Hotel. I was so excited when this got announced. Propagation is one of my favorite VR games and it's completely free. There's no excuse to not have it. If you have a PC, go onto Steam and download Propagation. It's a wave-based but story-driven zombie shooter that descends into absolute chaos. At first you are just shooting generic shambling zombies and then it's mutants and then it's giant spiders and it gets worse and worse and worse. The production values are extremely high, the visuals are so sharp, and it's just really well put together for a free product. Can't wait to see how they're gonna grow this into a more fleshed out game in Propagation Paradise Hotel. And finally, we come to the last game on this exceptionally long list, a game that I actually almost forgot to include. The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners Chapter Two Retribution, the standalone follow-up to Saints and Sinners, one of the very best VR games on the market right now, an absolute triumph in my opinion. I went into it not expecting much. TV tie-ins, movie tie-ins, they typically don't deliver, but Saints and Sinners blew all my expectations away and is still a VR game I play to this day. So more of that in a brand new setting with new weapons, new characters, yes please. If it has co-op, I will absolutely lose my mind because that is the one thing that could make Saints and Sinners the very best VR game out there. Well, I thought I was done, but I forgot one last game. So here I am in microphone only form. It's far too late to turn the camera back on. I'm not doing it, I refuse. The last game on this list is the Exorcist Legion VR Sin, the follow-up to the incredibly terrifying Exorcist VR game from developer Wolf and Wood. Now the sequel isn't being developed by those guys, it's now being developed by Pocket Money Games, but I do hope it still manages to retain the terror and horror and incredible jump scares that the original provided. One thing to note about this follow-up, which we don't have many details for, is the sin in the title stands for safety in numbers. So this is now a co-op game. So in theory, it shouldn't be as scary as the original because you can hug your virtual friends as you both poo yourselves together. It's a, an experience, a shared experience.
I definitely need to go to sleep. That brings me to the end of the video. I've been sitting here for about two hours rambling about VR games. The one thing you don't see when you watch a YouTube video is just how long it takes to record a YouTube video. And I kept adding games to the list, so I've only got myself to blame. Hopefully you've seen some games on here that you're really excited for. If you have, let me know down in the comments below. I genuinely want to play all of them. I think they all look great in their own way. And they're only a handful of the games that we'll be releasing this year for VR. There are still gonna be games we don't know about, games that are getting worked on in secret that haven't been announced yet. It's an exciting time to be in VR and be playing VR and be engaging with the VR community. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please do leave a like, leave a comment and hit subscribe and I'll see you very soon for another one. Take care of yourselves guys, see you later.